today, we get some new price cuts. Intel's next-gen desktop CPUs have a date, NVIDIA's 5090 gets a full redesign, and you'll never believe who makes NVIDIA's upcoming consumer CPU. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, with AMD's Ryzen 9000 series on the horizon, the company is starting to lower prices of their current gen products. And if you're interested in these, I'll have affiliate links down in the description below. It doesn't cost you anything more, and it helps the channel out. Starting things off, AMD's Ryzen 9 7950X 3D is currently on sale for just $547 on Amazon. That's a very nice 22% discount from MSRP. Not only that, but their 7800X 3D is also got a bit cheaper, dropping down to $340 when just recently it dropped to $355. With that said, there was a time where it magically dropped to $278, but I'm thinking that was a fluke or something because it went back to normal right around the time I posted my video. Either way, the prices are definitely impressive right now. So if you're a gamer and you've been looking to pick one up, there hasn't been a better time. Though obviously, if you'd rather wait for Zen 5, that makes sense as well. Next up for today, it looks like we finally have a release date for Intel's next-gen desktop and notebook CPUs. Don't forget that Intel's next-gen desktop parts will take on their new naming scheme. So instead of the Core i3, i5, i7, and i9, Intel is going with the Core Ultra 200 series, and we'd be looking at naming similar to their current Core Ultra 100 series notebooks. Either way, the CPUs are based on Arrow Lake, and while we are expecting an update at Computex, we know that the final release will come in Q4 of this year. And we now pretty much know when, because Intel just announced this year's innovation event, which is where Intel has announced most of their big products lately, including their 12th and 13th gen CPUs. This time, the event takes place on September 24th and 25th, which makes sense for a Q4 release. The announcement will likely be one of those days, with the release in early Q4. And we're expecting to see both Intel's desktop and notebook parts. Based on leaks so far, AMD will have already released their next-gen Ryzen, so Intel had better bring something big to stand out. Next up, NVIDIA's RTX 4090 is one huge GPU, with most models taking up between three and four slots, but they aren't just thick. They're also really long, so much so that plenty of cases aren't big enough for the longer GPUs. I mean, the 4090 is so big and heavy that PCBs are beginning to break under its weight, but with a power consumption of over 400 watts, it really isn't all that surprising. What's worse is that things don't look to be getting any better, as Intel's next-gen Falcon Shores, which apparently comes with an unbelievable TDP of 1500 watts, and NVIDIA's own next-gen B200 accelerator can pull as much as a 1000 watts compared to last gen's max of 700, with NVIDIA looking to water cool these systems. And don't forget that Blackwell is apparently the same architecture that will make up their gaming GPUs, so I assume the 5000 series will consume more as well. And this brings me to the story. In a new post on Twitter, Overclock3D discussed the leak suggesting the 5090 could be a huge GPU, referencing that leaked RTX 4090 Ti or Titan card. But the well-known leaker, Kobite7Kimmy, actually fought back against this claim. And according to him, the 5090 is actually a two-slot cooler, and he later stated that it uses just two fans. So NVIDIA's next-gen flagship is set to be a much smaller design, which is of course surprising because once again, NVIDIA's Blackwell architecture, which the 5090 is rumored to be based on, has a higher TDP from last gen. Of course, accelerators aren't gaming cards, but I highly doubt it's efficient enough to be a big boost in performance without any more wattage pull. Luckily, Copite7Kimmy later responds to a question about power draw and claims that while he's not sure if it consumes less or not, he is sure that the cooling design is more efficient. And that means that the 5090 is likely set to come with a completely new cooler design. I'm not sure if we're talking about a water cooler or what, but if this is true, I think it's clear that next-gen Founders Edition cards will be a full redesign. Let's just hope that we don't see any new issues with their power connectors. And lastly for today, you're never going to believe this one. If you've been following the channel, to which if you haven't, make sure you subscribe to GamerMail to stay up to date on all your favorite PC hardware news. Either way, if you have been following, you know that NVIDIA is working on an actual consumer CPU. Originally, we saw a leak claiming that NVIDIA is teaming up with MediaTek to release CPUs based on ARM and made for Windows, like Qualcomm's new Snapdragon X Elite chips. Later, Dell seemed to have confirmed it's not only coming, but it's coming next 
next year? Well, we now have some new information on NVIDIA's upcoming products. The story originally comes from a new post by known leaker Kepler on Twitter. In it, he responds to a tweet about that confirmation I recently discussed, and he claims that the CPU isn't built on TSMC. More specifically, he claims that it's actually made by Intel. Now, while he mentions 3 nanometers, I'm assuming he means their Intel 3 process node. Either way, if this is right, it would mean that Intel is making CPUs for NVIDIA. What's wild about this is that it could mean that Intel is effectively signing their own death warrant, or at least helping to potentially end their own products. I say that because ARM CPUs are a very direct competitor to Intel's own x86 chips. I'd argue that it's ultimately up to Microsoft as to how well ARM can do on Windows, but if the numbers we've been seeing are true, Intel could be in some serious trouble, and in this case, they could be doing it to themselves. This really could be the start of one wild future. So while that does it for today, do you think ARM can end up overtaking x86? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day!